there is a room with three windows and blue curtains that go along with it. Here, there is a family at the dinner table with four members. At one end, we see the father. At the other end, the mother. The two children are teenagers. Everyone has a happy look on their face, but the boy who is wearing the headphones has a thought bubble leading to a childhood memory in the same room at the same breakfast table where it is clear that he is sad due to something his brother has said. The boy at the table seemed happy with his family, and he felt that way sometimes too. But the happiness was often overshadowed by an unpleasant memory of the past. A brother who jokes, who jokes too far, a brother who calls him fat, who makes him feel that scar. Did the brother mean it? Who knows? Yet he felt it, that he knows. Here, we see the same family in the same room wearing the same clothes. However, the boy who wore the headphones is no longer at his chair. Instead, we see another image where this boy is standing in a bathroom, looking over a toilet, his head bent down in that direction. He excuses himself. The family sees nothing wrong, but they wait for him to come back but it takes much too long. He enters and stares. He's not there to use the toilet. He is there because he remembers, remembers the embarrassment and pain, which he uses to do what he needs to feel free. He is wearing the same clothes as he wore in the bathroom. The boy with the headphones walks through high school halls, his hands down, his head looking down, his eyes and his gaze bored and disconnected. In the background, we see two girls who seem to be looking at him as their gaze is fixed on him. They wear smiles, so we feel that they are speaking good things about him. It's the same day, and he is at school. The girls seem to like him, smart, fit, and cool, but he doesn't care. He hides. He hides with his gaze. He hides with his walk. He hides with his headphones. He hides because of the pain he feels. The boy who once wore the headphones is standing in his room, which has one bed and a bookcase with a trophy, teddy bear, globe, books, and statue. He is in his underwear and looks in a mirror. His look is detached, and in the mirror, he sees a reflection of what he looked like in his childhood. To the right, there is a faint image of that same room with the boy, who we see in the mirror, looking into the mirror, seeing himself. This boy has a tear on his face, and he is slouched down. He realizes how people see him now. He feels they lie. He looks at himself in the mirror and thinks, wow, he still sees the same kid inside. He knows he has changed, yet that doesn't change. How he feels. The scene is in the same room as before. The boy is lying on his bed. He looks tired. His parents hover over him with concerned looks on their faces. All of them are dressed in pajamas. The next day he lies in bed not wanting to move, not able to move. He feels terrible. His parents worry. They do not know what but they think something is wrong. They think something is wrong physically. We see two scenes of the boy at doctor's appointments. At the first, he is in a dentist's chair as the dentist examines his teeth. 
In the second, he is being given an eye exam. He looks at the wall, away from us, as the doctor writes on his clipboard the results. His mom thinks about his previous checkups. At the dentist, nothing was out of the ordinary, yet his teeth were eaten up. At the eye doctor, his vision seemed to worsen, yet the mom thought that that was natural. With age, his eyes had some broken blood vessels, yet the doctor claimed head trauma during sports. In this scene, we see the boy and his worried mother at a doctor's office. The boy is sitting on an examination table as the doctor, who is going to examine him, holds a stethoscope and looks at his direction. The mom was so worried, so now he's here. He let them take the lead, yet he felt his fear. Vitals and tests the doctors meant to read, which turned out to be clear. Yet she saw something strange, and she knew it must be for a reason. His body showed a change, which indicated a poison. We see the same three characters. Now, however, we are in the doctor's personal office. She sits behind her desk and appears to be giving some news. The boy looks down, showing some shame. The mother looks at him, concerned. The boy was still scared. The mom was still worried. The doctor saw the signs. He seemed malnourished, even though he was fit. He seemed dehydrated, even though he drank water. So the doctor suggested someone else. Now we see the boy sitting on a couch with a professionally dressed woman. He seems to be confiding in her, looking down, feeling afraid. She places her hand on his shoulder and gives him a comforting look. She asked what was wrong, he wouldn't say, yet all along he knew the way he felt inside. He knew what and why he did. She told him that it wasn't wrong to feel this way, to act this way, to accept and not hide.